This is Bobby Lashley, and you're watching PWR by 24 Milwaukee. This week on the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time, we've got part one of an interview with Bobby Lashley. Be the booker for the main event of Ryback versus CM Punk at Hell in a Cell. And the latest from WWE and TNA, along with this week's Star of the Week. All that and more coming up right here, right now, on the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time, Saturday night. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report, Prime Time Saturday night. Damian Nelson sitting here alongside David Octavius and Tiberius, the alleged backyard, one-time knockout stop, Divas Hall of stop, Fame, stop, hardcore stop. champ. This week, I'm Damian Nelson. It's my Halloween costume. It's Halloween weekend. You Trick could only treats. wish. I'll be you knocking on doors. You could only wish. What? Yeah, do your civil duty. Yes. Civil duty. Yes. What, what nice shirt. I'm glad you, you you know you're just trying to be like the cool kids, me and Robbie E, now you and you know Armando Bro, It's Halloween all... weekend. Yes it is, and I, I don't dress up. I need a costume. You you're going to need like a little you. more than that to uh get anywhere near. I mean anyways, stop taking all the time to yourself. It's time now ladies and gentlemen for WWE news and uh let's go to this week's WWE report and start with the tag team superstars of the Road Scholars, Cody and Damian Sandow, on their way to Sunday's Hell in a Cell to battle for the Tag Team Championships against Team Hell No. It seemed like Sin Cara and Rey Mysterio might have been in line to win that tournament, but uh, wouldn't be the case this past Monday You know night. what? Team Raisin didn't quite get it done, but I'm telling you right now, the Road Scholars are on their way to a semi-main event at Hell in a Cell. And the reason I say semi-main event is there has not been a tag team more popular in, I'd say, the last five to ten years than Team Hell No, Kane, and Daniel Bryan Danielson. There will soon be another team as popular, if not more popular, the Road Scholar. You know what? They're a good young tag team. I'm just hoping that Matt Stryker doesn't get too involved with this tag team, and then it gets kind of crowded. We talked about that opportunity or option in Be the Booker, which is available at pwrshow.com, our online uh, version of that. We'll bring you a little taste of Be the Booker here tonight on primetime as well. Taste but uh, you know what? I was a little, I was a little concerned when uh, they waited for Mysterio to get back to have that matchup because it seemed as if it was pointing towards Ray and Sin Cara winning. But, of course, they did not have the skills or talents not. to overwhelm Cody There's no way Cody Rhodes. Ray Sin was going to go on to face Hell No. Why not? It wouldn't make sense. Like you haven't lately? I make sense every single week. Every week. AJ is no longer the general manager of WWE Raw. She has been removed due to a scandal Ooh. of uh, the allegations of inappropriate behavior between her and we would find out from Vince McMahon later that night, John Cena. You know, it's a good thing that some of the employees of PWR don't fall under those same set of guidelines and rules. What do you mean? Well, there's a lot. You are always in inappropriate behavior. St. Louis, duffel bag of doom. I don't carry duffel bags. I have people to carry my bags for me. AJ gone. AJ no longer general manager replaced by Vicky God. Guerrero. My, you know what? She had to go. But I, I think it was done for two reasons. I don't think AJ was as over with the, with the audience as she once was. Yeah. And they also had to find a way to get Vicky Guerrero away from Dolph Ziggler, Dolphy Z. Really? Apps, listen. Talked about that. As be the talented as, as Vicky is, getting heat. She her heat was overshadowing Dolph Ziggler, and if Dolph Ziggler is going to be a star, he needs to do it on his own. And by getting Vicky away from him, that's how you do it. Vicky Guerrero, the managing supervisor on Raw, or something like that. Why head, are why, well head supervisor? Why are all the scandals? The general. Why is the general manager role so important? Because you need, it really, you need someone to write the ship. You need. A we never had that head. in the past. No, you didn't. It was a different time back then. You had no. You had Jack Tunney. Yeah, but you only saw him when you needed to. He wasn't exactly. on every week starting but the show. You know what? They need the wrestling fans today are different. They need to be force-fed storylines so everyone knows what's happening when things change back and forth every week. You know what it really was. 
No, nope, you're going to tell me. 1997, during the Attitude Era. We went from Slaughter being the commissioner to Vince McMahon stepping up into that authority role. And ever since then, we've been saddled with the need for general managers or some type of commissioner or something. Does it, does that though? That, you were a commissioner. You were the I GM was an interim on Saturday general manager night. At GLCW Saturday night. Yes, yes I was. And, uh, Thanks for not handing out freebies. No, I did not. No, you didn't. Um, this dependence, though, on those roles, has that taken away from the need of the talent to actually do what you just said, which is to fill in those blanks, if you will, and, and get the story out there? No, uh, honestly, I think they need a general manager on the shows because otherwise, how do the matches come to be? The way they came to be before there were general managers but, on the shows. But it's a different product. I challenge you, you challenge me, we accept, we have a match. It is a different product, but they needed these authority figures when it was chaos. Oh, and wrestling's not chaos, chaos anymore. Oh, it's still kind of. There's quite a bit of chaos. There, there's shenanigans in the back. AJ Lee and John Cena. That's chaos. There's the Nancy Kerrigan, Eve Marie Torres, and Caitlin. Chaos. Who will be? You, you got you got uh, anger management. Chaos. Who will be the general manager? Does it matter? Do we care? There's a lot of rumors care. that it could be one of four. If you stop reading that stuff on the internet. I'm just saying, I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just saying it's a rumor that it could be one of four. It's going to be in Charlotte, North it's Carolina. Carolina. Justin Gabriel, a bit surprisingly, David sure Harrell, sure. got a uh, pinfall victory over Antonio Cesaro, the United States champion, the best Monday Night on Raw. I was a little surprised by that. Not as surprised I as uh, Cody every, losing. I think everybody was surprised about that. But what's the point? I mean, uh, obviously, they're trying to make a star out of Cesaro. Uh, are they trying to do the same thing, perhaps, with Justin Gabriel? There's they, a little bit of a they, backstory there. They need to. They need to elevate some of these other people. Justin Gabriel, he goes out there. He's been get, he's been the whipping boy. They don't know if they want to team him up with Tyson Kidd or have him as a singles competitor. Maybe they should team them up on the newly tag game, which is something we saw this West Monday night on Raw. Brutal. When you have other talent in the back you could use to fill that time with, and you decide to do it the defunct game show? Ugh. I'm just happy that the intellectual, uh, that, the, that, that Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow ended that segment and put it into, they refused to participate. See, they're real stars. They're there to wrestle, not have a comedy act. Your buddy CM Punk, David Hero, uh, recently did an interview with our friend Arda O'Cal of The Score up yes, in Toronto, Ontario, Arda. Canada, speaking about his matchup this Sunday with uh, Ryback at uh, Hell in a Cell. And a lot of people, including you, have said that uh, he probably isn't very happy about that pairing. But he said this, and I quote in regards to that, I'm glad, actually. I think you'll take... I think you take a look at Ryback, and he's your typical WWE wrestler. He's what Vince McMahon likes. But conversely, my choice was John Cena or Ryback. Cena's had shot after shot after shot. To me, the change I talked about a year and a half ago <laughs> was about new people stepping up and getting shots. So I'm excited. Got me choked up there. All these guys from Chicago talking about change. It's something new. It's something different. And I can sink my teeth into it. End quote. Uh, what do you mean all these guys from Chicago talking about? CM Punk is from Chicago. Yes, indeed he is. Yes, he is. At least he's been talking the same way for the last several years as opposed to changing the story every 20 minutes, depending on what he thinks you people want to hear. What are your thoughts on CM Punk's comments about Ryback and uh, the fact that he's actually looking forward to it? It's, the, it, it's new. It's somebody what else. What is he going to say? Ugh, I don't want to wrestle Ryback. Punk would? He would, but he can't now. He can't say that in a media interview. He can say it behind closed doors all he wants. Perhaps he'd have to clean it up like Chris Jericho did when he said that CM Punk is uh, just about uh, done drawing in WWE. CM Punk, to, I'm sorry, uh, Chris Jericho took to quit Twitter to clarify by saying, and I quote, let me clarify, CM oh, Punk is already a money drawing, ratings drawing, massive star. Ryback is not, but a big win on Sunday can make him one. That's what I've been saying. See, Jericho. Well, now all of a sudden you guy. and Jericho think the same. Well, not always, but on this we certainly do. Jericho's a smart fellow. That's this week's WWE report. Uh, actually, before we get to the end of that, Ryback had a great match on main event on Wednesday night, and him and Punk have been working but house shows let's for. Let's not forget, Ryback is being put in matches with guys that can create motion for him. Dolph Ziggler is a, a motion wrestler. He can carry Dolph. He can carry. He can make Ryback. Ryback look great. Absolutely. Not that Ryback looks bad, but he can make him look better than. You say he looks terrible. He nope, didn't say that at all. I mean, it's all recorded here. 
That's this week's WWE Report, ladies and gentlemen. We have a lot more to come, though, here on the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime, including part one of pants. our Bobby Lashley interview, TNA News, and Star of the Week. But when we come back, it's time for Be the Booker, for Ryback versus CM Punk in Hell and a Cell. That, right after this. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. We're in the sterile room now, David Hero, in the white room at the whiteboard for Be the Booker. Be the Booker for this Sunday's WWE Hell in a Cell on Pay Per View. And uh, we talked about the matches yesterday in a special episode available at PWRShow.com. But uh, all of these were discussed. Don't. Don't let them see this. Well, we're going to go ahead and, and recap for him. The, for the Intercontinental Championship, David Hero has selected or said he would book Kofi Kingston to win that matchup and retain that championship. He would have either Team Hell No or the Road Scholars all different, walk out all with the Tag Team Championships. Go to the website, check it out. Very, very detailed thoughts. Sheamus retains the World Heavyweight Championship over the Big Show, but does not leave as the World Heavyweight Champion. No way. I believe Dolph Ziggler, Dolphy Z, will cash in that briefcase and defeat Sheamus to become the new World Champion. Randy Orton defeats Alberto Del Rio in yet another matchup, a matchup that will no doubt be tremendous, but again, yet another matchup. Eve retains the Divas Championship over Caitlyn, and now it's time, David the Hero, to talk about the main event. event. The main event in Hell in a Cell, it is WWE Champion CM Punk, one-on-one -on -one with Ryback, who wants to be fed more, and you've been very vocal over the last few weeks about this matchup, about Ryback, about CM Punk. So, David Hero, how would you say is to make this match happen. Sunday at Hall in a Cell, CM Punk defends his championship against Ryback. If the WWE wants the payoff they've been waiting for, if they want to elevate and make a new star, which they desperately need, Ryback, who I cannot believe I am saying this, will go into the WWE Hell in a Cell main event and have a three and a half star match with CM Punk because the heel will always carry the baby face. In this case, he's gonna have to. And Ryback should and would leave the new WWE champion in Atlanta, Georgia to fireworks, to applause, to feed me more chants, to everything you could possibly imagine for a new young star right here. This is this has potential to be Goldberg Hogan. Oh, uh, uh. what? Yes, it's the same scenario. The undefeated stud goes into this Atlanta. This is not Nitro. It's oh, not the Georgia Dome. It's though. not, but it's similar. And CM Punk, who is, I guess you could say the Hollywood Hogan right now, correct? That he's loved not and hated. Getting ripped up and all that. Ryback is cheered and loved. Goes in, hits the shell shocker. On Punk, if they don't do this, Damian Nelson, then you know what they should do? On Monday morning, if Ryback is not the new champion, release Ryback. Because everything they will have done at that point will have been for nothing, and he will mean nothing because he will have lost. So you want to see... Ryback take on The Rock at the Royal I'm Rumble. Not, that's your no, dream matchup no, in no, January. Because it's not, that's what you just said is no, going to happen. I'm not saying he's going to take on The Rock. What I'm saying is let him beat CM Punk tomorrow night. CM Punk can then beat Ryback at Survivor Series or at the D December pay-per-view. It will make CM Punk a stronger champion. 340 it days. It means it's just a number. It means This isn't nothing. Aaliyah. Did you forget it's a work? Did no, you I didn't forget. What I know is what they've been trying to get me to believe, which is that CM Punk is one of the longest reigning WWE champions of all time, and that streak Not of all that time. matters. He's barely in the he's, top ten. He's in the top ten. Barely. He's in, but he's Number in the top nine. ten, so of all time. Here is the thing. They would not be talking about like how long days. he's had that title. They would not be talking about the matchup with the Rocket Royal Rumble if, if, they were concerned about this short-term gain that you are predicting, which is a hot shot. You are saying they should it's hot, not a hot shot, shot this right no, back it's thing. Not. Yeah, you are because you're saying create and make him a transitional champion or a 
title holder, a placeholder, if By you will. By making him a transitional champion elevates him to but, a bigger star. And then he still loses the belt. He will be no further along whether he but loses tomorrow no, or loses in yes, a month. He'll be far, much further along because he will have defeated the WWE champion. Whose title Punk. reign doesn't matter, you said. I don't care about days. It's all about the moments, and this could be a humongous moment for Ryback to be a new star going in to but 2013. It's, it's temporary. Why are you so short-sighted? I'm not. Why am I so short-sighted? Yes. You're looking at this for a one-night. This is a one-night stand. No, it That's basically what you're looking for with Ryback. No. You're looking for Ryback to win and Punk to lose. Why? I still Ryback don't can, see the Ryback why. Ryback can keep the belt for two months. Punk will be too damaged. No, he won't. He Punk be cannot damaged. be damaged. He can be. Punk has had Without the title, matches. what does he have? Punk has had his head shaved, okay? He's lost to Rey Mysterio. He's been knocked out by Big Show. He, he's, previously, he's been put in every awkward spot there is. Ryback can beat and should beat CM Punk. If not, Ryback is finished. We talked last week about making this interesting. Absolutely, I'll make it interesting with you. If I'm already Ryback your, wins, your, I'm already wearing the Damian like, Nelson Halloween costume. You like Mighty Mouse, right? Sure. Here I come to yes. save the day. If I, if Ryback wins, yes. this match on Sunday, sure, I will get a tattoo on my arm. Okay. Of the little gimmick logo thing, your Superman thing the or Superman whatever. Superman logo, okay. If yeah, Ryback wins, because sure. he ain't going to win. That's Fine. how confident I, I am confident in that. I am confident in November 6th. I am confident in the Royal so Rumble. So you'll get a I'm Superman tattoo if Ryback defeats CM Punk. If Ryback wins the WWE Championship on Sunday hell in Hell in a Cell. Cell. There's no DQs. If he wins the WWE Championship on Sunday at Hell in a Cell, mm -hmm. yes, I will get a tattoo Superman on my arm. Beautiful. I have raised the ante. What will you offer? Oh, gee, look, nothing. Again, thank you so much for showing up. That's the end of this segment. Be the booker for WWE Hell in a Cell. And coming up, actually right now, David Hero. Yeah, we got other stuff. Let's go to, to an about. interview that I had the opportunity to conduct with Bobby Lashley, former ECW champion, former WrestleMania headliner, Bobby Lashley, right now, right here on the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. The before and after picture. Hello folks, Damian Nelson here with uh, Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley, welcome to the Pro Wrestling Report. How are you, sir? I'm fabulous. Fabulous, fantastic. Of course. I understand you've been uh, lacking some sleep lately. Are you rested? Are you ready for this? Because i got hard-hitting questions for you. You know, this is a new little season for me. I've been doing the independent scene, and, and um, yeah, I haven't got too much sleep, but it's cool. I can roll with it. Well, tell everybody what you're up to nowadays. You talk about doing the independent scene. We know that you've been getting into the MMA world as well. And uh, just update everybody as to uh, how that's going with your track on the MMA career. Like fighting. It's a fighting school. I, I just, you know, it's, fighting for me is kind of a hobby. I shouldn't say that to him, maybe, but <laughs> no, I, I enjoy fighting. I, I love fighting. I, I own a couple gyms, so with the gyms, I train all the time. And I get I get other fighters prepared, and then every once in a while, I get a call. I think um, coming up pretty soon, I got a, a pretty good deal that I'm a lock in, and then I might be fighting full time, or I might be wrestling. Time. So right now, I'm honing my wrestling skills and yeah. I'm continuing to train for fighting. So whichever one we decide to do, I'll be ready for it. Now, I said I had hard-hitting questions, and this question need be asked because I know most recently when you were on a national scene in professional wrestling, you were with TNA, and part of the whole deal was you were going to be doing both MMA and pro wrestling. If you had to make a choice, Bobby Lashley, mixed martial arts, professional wrestling, what decision would you make right here, right now? You know what? If I had to make that decision, I would wholeheartedly, 100% shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Are you in? Are you okay? Sorry about it. Yeah, that's what I would choose. Nice. What? You know? I don't I, realize I, you I, lean I, to the right. I, no, I, I, re I really don't. I really don't know. What it's good to do both, though. I mean, because you get um, a little bit of different, but the same in both worlds. You yeah. say you like to fight. I like, I like fighting, but... Um, uh, I love wrestling, fighting, I love wrestling. I really love wrestling. I enjoy fighting. I really enjoy fighting. I don't think I'm ready to make that decision. I think, I think the contract will make that decision no matter who 
where I go, what I do. If, if the right situation is put in front of me, then that's what I would do. It's been a while since we've seen you in either WWE or TNA. As you said, you're doing the independent stuff right now. Are you? That seemingly is the track that has worked out for you well over the last few years, but do you miss being in the national spotlight in either WWE or TNA, especially seeing what we are uh, sort of being given right now from both those companies? I mean, I understand you're a huge fan of Ryback. You just threw all that at me all at once. Huh? Hard hitting. I, I, don't, I don't even know how to answer that. Um, to be in the spotlight, I, I think I think some of these people, some of the hype needs to be challenged. So I think there's a lot of people on the outside that if they brought in, we would see if they're as great as they actually were. So yeah. people out there. And you know, actually, a little kid today asked me um, asked me about Ryback. You know, I'm a big that was fan a little of kid. That was Linda K. <laughs> 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 you, 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 you have to be fans of certain people in there. And you know what? Whoever they put the rocket under, of course, you're going to be a little bit of a fan of. I don't, I don't want to say necessarily I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of anybody out right now, but I, I think Ryan Beck is doing some, some pretty cool things. I think um, I think Ziggler is doing some cool things. I think Punk is doing some cool things. I'm a huge fan of Kurt. I don't know where he's at, what he's doing, but he's not being the Kurt Angle that, yeah. that actually brought me into the business in the yeah. first place. But, um, and you forgot Cody Rhodes. Yeah. WrestleMania 23, Detroit, Michigan. I was there. You had one of the marquee matches, one of the headlining matchups at WrestleMania. Obviously, it's every wrestler's dream to be a part of the grandest spectacle in sports entertainment, as they say, WrestleMania. What did that feel like for you to be involved, with not only with a man, but also Donald Trump in a huge matchup in Detroit? That was, you know, that was a dream for Detroit. It, it was incredible. It was kind of one of those deals where I say before, when I walked out, it was almost so loud that it was quiet. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, a, that's a feeling that is more internal than, than external. So when I went out there, I mean, it was ridiculous. But then on top of that, you know, they dropped a ton of cash. <laughs> real I'm cash. Talking, yeah, real cash. <laughs> and I didn't realize it was real cash, and I started walking down there, and I'm seeing like 20s and 100s on the ground. I'm like, same character, same character, <laughs> same <laughs> character. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of what I was doing. But you know what? Having that opportunity, you know, a lot of times um, because certain people may not like you or, or want to erase you from the memory books or the history books, um, that match you know, may eventually be the largest WrestleMania in history. That's one thing. That's one thing. I don't want really to say the powers of even the Whoever does not want it. Well, I read some stuff on some dirt sheets out there about that. Yeah, you know anything uh, about what you weren't even paying attention to the Lashley interview. Bobby Lashley joins us here on this program, talks about his time wrestling and MMA and what he's up to now, and you're doing this. You know, Thank you, Bobby Lashley, you for know, joining us. Bobby Lashley and I had a chat about this main event. He's just like you, completely wrong. The Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Saturday night continues right after this short timeout. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report prime time on uh, Saturday night. And uh, wow, you still you still think that it's going to be Ryback winning on Sunday. Absolutely. I will get a tattoo. I will get yes. branded. Uh, you should. If he wins I, the WWE Championship absolutely. on Sunday from CM Punk. It will make Notice how clear and specific I'm being. I know, because you're looking for your... No, you're, uh, you're I'm looking not for your you out. loophole is what you're looking for. No, those all are going to uh, went away, yes, I thought. Yes, I'm sure they have. You know, I'm just excited about Halloween. Trick or treat tomorrow. You look nothing like Cal you, Cal and I are going to be look... going out, knocking on doors. Watch out for those apples. I've heard about apples. It's what downfall mankind. Just ask Eve. But uh, yeah, I got my Damian Nelson costume on. I'm ready to roll. Let's go to this week's TNA report, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, TNA has a big announcement, at least, uh, made last week by Dixie Carter. Over in the U.K., they're going to be bringing Impact Wrestling back to the U.K., the television show on Spike TV. Four weeks of television to be taped in the U.K. next year. Uh, as we know, TNA Impact is going to be live. So they're going to do it over time. Two shots, I believe. 
Two, two you know, I understand episodes. that your good close personal friend Jeremy Borash lives in the UK, and he's been facilitating a lot of this stuff. He does a lot of good work for them over in yes, the United Kingdom and getting a lot of this stuff up and running. He's always when rolling. They, when they went to uh, the UK last time and did Impact, it was probably some of their best episodes that they'd ever done just because of the atmosphere. Let's hope this time they have a full roster over there. Yeah, they were missing a few people last time. They mm -hmm. absolutely were. They just scored record ratings with impact on Challenge Television over in the UK. Uh, they've got big business over there, David Hero, and they actually spent a lot of time focusing on it. This is a great revenue stream for TNA Impact Wrestling. Absolutely. And you know what? Right now, TNA, they're going in the right direction. How is Aces and Aids going to get over there? You know, you have to get through TSA, and if they all have those hoods on and stuff, it's going to make things difficult. How'd you like Championship Thursday this past uh, you know, Thursday? You know what? They pulled out the stops. You know, you had Tara defeating Miss Tessmacher. Uh, good to see Big Rob Terry involved. You're talking about TNA is so forced. So, you know, let's go to the it's experts, not ladies and forced. gentlemen. For those of you watching us online, oh, let's go to Meathead and Matthew. An expert? Uh, Are with you uh, me? a piece from this Thursday, Sutton Impact Radio, talking about Impact just after it went off the air. For those of you watching us here in Milwaukee, we shall continue to let this show roll and talk more about Impact. And uh, there's rumors out there, David Hero, since you've been reading websites and sheets and stuff, that Robbie E. is going to get someone to get involved with Honey Boo Boo. Well, that's, that's nothing but rumors. I mean, Robbie E., the new GLCW champion, Whoa! is is not going to be doing any shenanigans with Honey Boo Boo. Let's completely clean that up. What? There was rumors that Honey Boo Boo wanted to wrestle. I was not going to wrestle Robbie. I will that not. he would be training Listen, her. Listen, the that. GLCW champion is not going to be in a match with a seven-year-old girl. A seven-year-old brat. I, I've never seen this show. I saw some coverage about her on CNN and her. I've never seen it either. You sure? It's not my kind of show, no. Oh, soap's getting the way? No, I watch Arrow on, you know, Channel 18 here in Milwaukee. Wednesday nights. That's this week's TNA report, ladies and gentlemen. Let's now go to this week's uh, PWR. This week's star PWR the week. star of the week is the new GLCW heavyweight champion and a member of the Nelson family, Robbie E. Robbie That's E. Good choice. defeated Armando Estrada and Mr. Anderson and Racine at point of entry <laughs> last Saturday night. Great show, by the way. Thank you. Now Robbie E. goes into Blizzard Brawl as the GLCW champion. But on December first. Yes. Hmm. But we first have to get through Halloween. Trick Halloween is coming yes. up this Wednesday, yes, yes, indeed. Well, no, trick or treat's tomorrow. In Grafton, I'll be trick or treating. Halloween is Wednesday. Yeah, but we celebrate Sundays, right? I don't know when you celebrate and what you celebrate. I need do the I microphone care. so when I go from house to house, they know who I am. I need the PBR show, show mic. It's not happening. Why not? I just, you got this ridiculous costume yes. on. You're wasting TV time. You've picked a great star of the week. I'll give yes, you that. I have. Here, you can put on a costume. You can be a mummy. You can put this on, wrap that around you, whatever. Ah, now I know why you don't think I'm you. I forgot the other part of the, ma the costume. There. <laughs> now I'm Damian Nelson. You are completely ridiculous. <laughs> That's this week's edition of the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time, ladies and gentlemen. Have a safe trick or treat and Halloween, and we'll see you again here next week, right here on the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time. Thank you for tuning in.